Right. I was going to make the last one, my last video, but I thought I'd do one more because I'm, I'm, I uh, missed a couple of things out which I thought might be of interest to some people. I just went to, um, had a good day yesterday actually. I managed to get out to Witherington Farm near Salisbury. Fished a, they have a open every fortnight on the lakes so they've got these small lakes um selwood cottage and barn what they're called they're about 16 pegs you wouldn't want 16 people on there but they're about you get 10 10 11 people on there comfortably and i it was a beautiful what a lovely day that was yesterday no wind what a rarity no wind and that the, the the venues round here that I fish for commercials, they're flipping so windswept and what's happened to the brightness on this then? Hold on. Why has it gone all bright again? What's that? Hold on. Hold on. That'll do. Stay like that. Oh, it's gone up again. See, I'm flipping useless at this sort of stuff, as you can see. Why does it keep doing that? No. Hold on a minute. It's just too bright. You have to put up with me being bright. Um, yeah, they're so, like... Um, well, the three main ones around here. Not so much Ivy, that's a bit more enclosed, but Tobber, Witherington. I'll, I'll have a little tiny bit of blow on it. And it is absolutely flipping blows the gale really uncomfortable it's a shame they don't just plant a few island those quick growing trees around there perhaps island eyes they call them those fir, fir trees anyway i do i digress again i set up a at a white at, um i was on selwood peg nine which is a very good peg and it was um i set up a waggler I'm pretty sure you, it's fairly clear and shallow. It's only about two or three foot deep. I was informed that I was very unlikely to catch fish short or down the edge. And as the, as a lot of pegs were in, I didn't bother setting up an edge. I did set up a six metre, no, an eight metre maggot line. I didn't have a bite on it. So basically, I had just kept it simple. One long pole line with... Sloppy micro pellet, or a little bit of micro pellet, and a few formal expanders fed lightly through a pot regularly, and loose fed corn on the waggler between, I don't know, anything between four meters off. And by the island, it's no, there's no, there's no slope on that, and it's just a, it's just, um. Same depth by the island as it is four foot off the or four meters off the island, so it's quite nice actually. Plum in the waggler, I tell you what, I have to just say something about plum in the waggler. You want to have a float. You want to have a. You don't want to. Don't too don't put too big a blooming sh shot on your hook to plum the well. SSG something to just take the blooming waggler under because I've seen people plumbing before you've got to take a bit of time with it as well because you can cast out it goes under you just got to wait a little while and you and some people get oh that's it oh, that's done but they're fishing on the bottom when they think that when they um think they're off the bottom so you've got to take um take a bit of time on the plumbing side of it try and get it quite accurate you can never get it proper accurate you can't say oh, i'm fishing dead depth you don't know whether it's dead depth or flipping four inches over the depth or but you know it's on the bottom, which is the, which is the important thing sometimes. And um, it was good conditions yesterday, so I just started off about, I don't know, four inches on the bottom, six inches on the bottom. Last shot, <laughs> just probably just touching the bottom. And number th I think I put one, two, simple shot in pattern in that depth of water. You don't need a lot of shot down. One, two, three, three number 12s, they are. And... Um, I, uh, I'll tell you what I did. Hold on. Hold on.
Won't be a minute. Be patient. I'm trying to find the float I was looking to use. I can't. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, hold on. Don't go away. Yeah, one of these. <sighs> Come on, get out of these balls. Done. Good conditions. Nice fine tip. One of those photo lesson tips, which I touched on on one of my previous blogs, vlogs. And what did he take? I'll tell you what he took because I got it on here. In fact, I got the rig. Another tip: stick all your blooming wagglers and stick floats on winders. Saves an awful lot of time when you ain't got a lot of time to tackle up. It really does, and it. You just tie it on with a blood knot, nicely little trim blood knot, and it doesn't really impede your casting at all, really. I don't think, anyway. And here you go. Here you go. I just lose feeding about six grains of corn throughout the match. Six hour match. No, five and a half hour match. Oh, God. Yeah, so I had that dot. I didn't have it dotted because there was a few. F there was a lot of stock. There was a lot of fish in front of me. <laughs> there was a lot of stockies in front of me, and I was getting liners. I didn't want to dot it. I did dot it down at one stage. I missed too many. I missed a few bites where that. I think. I think you're striking out liners half the time. So I had. Still, you got the sensitivity because you got a nice thin tip. But I probably had that much float out of the water. I'm waiting for it to proper bite on there. And this helps no end hooking the bites, is what I said about it sliding. Look, you're gonna have to have it sliding a little bit. Um, it's only about that deep, literally, it's only about that deep. Look, uh, can't really tell you, can't, you can't see from it. Doesn't matter, it's two and a half, three foot deep, three foot max, two and a half foot deep. And the good thing about this, you can, as I said about varying the depth, you want to go. Deeper a little bit. Let's try going a bit shallower. You got one shot to move is so easy. Just bring it down like that. Anyway, that's what I caught on. Single grain of corn. Little um those little tiny um crystal bend. Although I've tweaked it a little bit, so it's an in-betweeny. Why isn't that focusing? There you go. Crystal 610, that is. Camasan. I love Camasan looks. Stood the test of time, haven't they? And that is a 6-inch hook length of 010 Seal Star. Anyway. Caught most of me fish on that, to be honest with you. But I did have... <laughs> The best run, nearly always, the best run of fish is your first run of fish on any flipping method, I find. You rest it and go back to it. It comes back a little bit, but nowhere near as good as the first time. That's exactly what happened yesterday. There's loads out there to start with on the corn, Michael. I did start on the pole. I was tapping a bit of baiting on the pole. I had some skimmers. All sizes. Nice fish. They do a silver pool on there. It's a defaulted silver pool, which is good, I think. Spread some money about a bit. Pay top three. On each lake, each of the two lakes that we're in, um, 55, 40, 30, I can't remember, and there's 25 or 30 quid silver pool. So at least a third of the anglers get paid out, which is really good, I think. And it's, as I say, it's default. So I've had about 14 pounds of skimmers on and off on the pole. Had a couple on the wagger and corn, not many. And I said it was flat calm and... That pole fishing, had to dot it right down. Well, I say had to dot it. it they were funny bites on it. Like, like nothing bites. Just nicking a blooming four mil pellet, expander pellet through the... I can't get that blooming brightness right. Through the um, through the through the flat end that I was on about earlier, on the earlier video. 
that pulls through nice and easily. And um, I can't have that. I, I'd probably add about six floats length on the bottom, a little bit more sometimes. But with this dead depth thing, to be honest with you, I've tried it. And I, the only time I find it works really well, dead depth, is if you're moving the bait and working it with a half pellet or any pellet. You, you lift and drop and it can't. If you've got to wait any amount of time, well, I can't get the blooming bites at dead depth. Hardly. Don't get nearly so many bites as I do a little bit of line on the bottom. Especially from skimmers, but also from carp. <laughs> but um, I know a lot of people. Oh, everyone's for real, isn't it? Let's face it. But I was thinking if there's any amount of water movement, you're not going to, you won't keep the bait still, will you? You need almost, you do need a little shot on the bottom sometimes just to hold it dead still and get the bites. <laughs> so I, I'd go anything up to 18 inches over depth. I think nothing of it, even on the pole, depending on conditions, but particularly on the waggler. Loads of, loads of line on the bottom. You've got to dot it down a bit more then, because you um, yeah, it takes them a bit of time to, when you see the bite, they're on the, you get, I can't explain why, but you just have to <laughs> dot it down a bit more. Dead depth, fall up a bit, you have a bit of float up, wait for them to take it uh, properly. What am I, I've been driveling on about now. Um, back to the waggler. Oh yeah. Tell you what, I've noticed. You see, people. You see, I used to do it myself. Sinking the line on the waggler. What's the way to? Uh, what way do you sink the line on the waggler? Put the rod tip and flipping like that. The whole lot sinks. You pull the float miles off the island. Better way to sink the line on a waggler, right? Obviously, you can't sink the line if it's straight. Not well, you can't because there's no pressure on the line to get it under water. So cast out, clip it to the island. Let the wind cause it. You've got to wait a little bit for the wind to cause a slight bow in the line from the waggler back, and just just flick it, flick it a few times to get that bit of line under the water between the waggler and halfway back to you. You're keeping the line above the surface between you and midway. So when you strike, you haven't got to strike through flipping the whole lot of water. It's not that resistance. You're just striking the line towards the waggler out of the water. Kevin Asher has ta taught me that in his one of his books. It's old books and the old... I can't remember what it's called now. It's a classic. You know, Ke I mean, he's quite good, Kevin Asher. Really. <laughs> he's got loads of tips in, in that book of his. And that was one of them. And ever since I've done that for part for on the waggler. And on the rivers, if you're fishing the waggler on the road, just the same. Quick flick, do, 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 do. a few times. You won't pull the waggler miles off course and it's better. You don't miss you don't got all that resistance of pulling the line right the way up between you and the float. Right, that's what we are. I've got an auto cue today, look. Haven't made any bloody difference. I still don't. Yeah, when it's a, obviously when it's a lot windy, I just put a straight pe straight piece of peacock on. When it's blown, you can fish the wagon when it's blown. Okay, I've had flipping. What's that lake down at Todd Ash Lake? A few couple of years ago, when the fish were like quite small and um, naive, if you like, um, piece of. Pe it's fucking horrible apes it's that really exposed you can put some line on the bottom some shot on the bottom straight peacock clipped up to that far side the straight peacock's got enough buoyancy just to trip slightly bank you know beautiful way of fishing love it and caught some good weights like that so obviously depend on my conditions determines the thickness of this tip on still waters but as I said yesterday Perfect conditions, beautiful day, perfect for that tip, that insert. And it was, uh, yeah. So alternating between the pole and the waggler, I've had 88 pounds, which was a really lovely day's fishing. <coughs> um, what are we on now then? Plumbing the depth, use any depth for line on Yeah, don't be worried, yeah. Getting there, don't worry. You can go in a minute <laughs> on pole. Sometimes use longer line. Ah, oh, yeah. 
this short line thing to the float on the pole used to do it gone away from it big time personally especially if you're waiting for bites it's all right if you're as i said over by the reeds lift and drop perfect as a short line uh but i found especially in the winter months you get more bites if you put it, you use a longer line to the you just do you keep the blooming keep the float away from the pole tip swing it easier beyond the blooming bait and stuff you know as you I mean, most of the fish on the pole yesterday, I was getting the odd little pinprick bubble over my micro pellets, put a bait straight over the top of that, couldn't get a flipping bite. It's quite often the case, it's a bit like in the summer, isn't it? You've got a jacuzzi, it's obviously fish there of some description, probably bloody great, impossible to catch carp or something. You put the, put the bait over the top, liners, all sorts, can't get a proper bite, just go beyond it where there's no bubbles, <laughs> and you start catching fish, it's weird. Beyond the bait's brilliant, isn't it? Obviously, try, well, try everywhere where you're, where you're feeding around the feed, even this side of the feed. But beyond, for me lately, has been the best spot by a mile to catch fish, and it was yesterday. Caught a few carp. Quite, I suppose I had a third of third of the carp on the pole. Again, I got them out on 08. Yeah, 08, 22, midi, brilliant elastic, yellow midi. And one of them with the Preston blooming Preston that blue hollow nine, that's nice. I have one on that, but the a supple one, the midi midi yellow it is, hollow elastic. Which is similar to that Preston stuff. It's brilliant. It's flipping lovely. You, you skimmers, you won't bump skimmers. I ain't lost any of them skimmers yesterday on the on a on a tiny hook. Oh 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 eight Milo crept on Philo. And um, didn't get snapped once. As I said the carp are manageable. That's the beauty, the beauty of them. They're, they're uh, you know, average, they're lovely little fish, two or three pound, perfect match size carp. What I call match size carp, lovely fishing. Anyway, that's enough of yesterday. I think on pole, some of these longer line as it's a float, especially for me, with small back shot, six inches above the float, acting as a shock absorber. Conditions really good. Start with a float length on bottom. I think I've gone through everything to be honest with you. Oh yeah, oh, that's the other thing. That's another thing. I don't do, which a lot of the top ones seem to do, which I can't can't really criticise because they win a lot more than I do. But I find that you don't want to step down too big a line diameter from main line. It's a mis uh, to the hook length, but to me it's a mismatch in, in some ways. And also, you can't, again, you can't, it's easier to control the rig with a lighter line, a whole rig. The bait goes down quicker, doesn't it? Because the I mean, if you've got 016 line, you need a much bigger float to have the same drop rate because of the resistance of the line through the water. <laughs> uh, I just go 012 to 010, 0 yesterday on the pole it's 0, 010 so I'll start to, to 08 so it's like a 0 0.02 drop between me me me, me up length and me, me main line it just seems to be um, better <laughs> it's just, I've tried thicker lines I just I can't get it's not so good it's just, I just prefer to use, and you don't get you, you always, pretty much always don't if you're gonna snap you go they up I think the hook length's more likely to snap if you've got a bigger jump because of that mismatch and you haven't got that the elastic end continuous. It's not so elastic, the bloody heavier line was the smaller, the thinner line. The whole lot elasticates more if it's lighter. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Uh, what else we got? Generally start with float lengths on the then venture. Feel free to put comments in the. Don't be too nasty, but comment on it if you want to comment on it. <laughs> Generally, start with flat like Mention step like that. Oh yeah, one one final word about hook baits, which I went through the other day. I didn't say. Uh, I think it's really important. Oh, Billy Makin did a. One of the first match fishing magazine articles he did was on 
pedigree hook baits, I think it was called. God knows, it might have been 1980s they started. Or, yeah, it must have been 1980s, mid 80s. That magazine started. Anyway, he's gone on about the importance of top quality hook baits all the time, whatever you use. Proper, fresh maggots, gozzers, and stuff. And so you hear people say, How oh, much? I, 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 I want to. You want old maggots for winter fishing? Well, I've never found that myself, to be honest with you. I've always found it's crucial to have really, really fresh bait, I think, so only with a big feed spot in. <laughs> and Rosie. Names are often. Oh, Rosie keeps getting mentioned, Danny. <laughs> Kevin, if you don't mind, I'll use your name yet again. We were practicing for a national on the River Trent. It was the 5th Division National. I think we won it with record points, actually, that year. I was fishing with Avon Bait. We were having a little knock-up along, a little practice, a little line-up along Shelford Shallows, I think it was. It was quite shy, yeah, six foot deep. Off. Steve Clark, flipping out. He's a bloke called Steve Clark, die with Trentman, I think he was. What a flipping encyclopedia of knowledge on the Trent. He was, Jesus. He knew every peg back to front. <laughs> every peg of that match that is unbelievable. He sort of majored one that sort of won the national for us, really. He he's um, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Anyway, we had this lineup and ta -ta 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 -ta. hold on my Kevin was fishing next to me. He's come up to me and said, You noticed something about and I hadn't really noticed it. He said can only get a bite. Can only get a bite when I put the freshest and freshest maggots on there. If I put an old one on there with no feed spot at all, can't get a bite. And he was right. And he was right. Yeah, he was absolutely right. And since then, I've found that loads of times. Proper fresh bait, really important. Even pinkies with a big feed spot, really important, especially as skimmers and stuff. That's why we used to do our own gozzers. We didn't do it for the hell of it. It was they were deadly, softer, and they can suck them in better. They're more appealing to the fish. Right, that'll do. I think. Man, mention stuff. Mention. If I think of anything else, I'll do another one. <laughs> anyway, that'll do for the time. All those three, three, one, three video, three videos. That'll do. And I might try and, as I said on the first one, I might try and get out on the banks of the River Raven, something like Chippenham in the warmer months, try and do a feature. I'll have to learn how to do this a bit more, I think, between now and then. Okie doke. See you again. Bye.